So 50 years, uh, 50 years young, that's just a child compared to me. But it's interesting to see that um, uh, we are around after 50 years. So A, we must be doing something right, and B, we've had some tremendous success from cellular devices in the past to LoRa devices now. So we do um, uh, radio technology products. We do the radio access network and part of the core network for LoRa, obviously. So I'm going to talk a bit about how LoRa One have changed uh, a few areas of the industry. We're going to see lots of examples from the oil and gas and the energy and the utility industries. I'm going to illustrate this with some showcases. But just, just to start, let's see now if we can make this happen. Um, so why, why would you want a dedicated wireless network, first of all? So uh, all this noise about digital transformation, turn your business digital, yeah? It, it's, it's all about improving efficiency, giving a nice user experience, saving money. It's all these, all these sort of soft values that you want to achieve, yeah? So having a standards-based um, broad ecosystem, industrial IoT solution, ticks many of the boxes here. Yeah? It allows you to save money. It allows you to do things more efficiently. Or actually, like this. It either allows you to save money, make new money, or, as one could paraphrase, stay out of jail, the latter being a, a synonym of uh, comply with regulatory requirements to be able to play. If it doesn't tick at least one of these three boxes, it's kind of not, not very valuable, but you need to achieve one of these three things. Yeah? So also, you want to own the network to uh, improve the availability and the resiliency, and also the privacy. Data needs to stay in your realm. Yeah? CapEx versus OpEx. Sometimes a CapEx-centric business model is preferred where you do inv the investment and you then own it. Sometimes an OpEx model is preferred where you pay someone else for them to supply you with a service. Um, more often than not do we see a CapEx-centric business model in many enterprise use cases. People want to own it for not only data privacy reasons, but also for finance reasons. Yeah? Um, and uh, we talked about the, uh, the security. Data in your realm or data in the context where you can manage it is normally an issue, specifically in the, in the utility, energy, or should we say safety critical business. Oops. Apologize for that. Um, let's just have a little look. Let's compare what you get from cellular versus in this case, LoRaWAN, an unlicensed spectrum technology here. Cellular is suitable, very suitable for broadband in the field or ensure you get high capacity uh, connectivity out there at a cost, of course. In this case, business model-wise, it's an OPEC-centric business model. Uh, lifetime cost might be higher, but you get kind of what you pay for. And this, by the way, is the lesson learned. Each technology for its purpose. It's not so that LoRa One addresses all the use cases. It addresses loads. It, it addresses most of the sensor actuator network centric cases where you need long battery life, wide area coverage, that are all the premises that LoRa fulfills. But we should bear in mind if you have requests for high data speeds, for uh, low latency, for um, um, uh, another key point here is um, quality of service. If you need guaranteed delivery, you need to play in a licensed spectrum band. So my point here is. Each technology for its right purpose, yeah? If you want to achieve all the premises that LoRa gives you, spot on. It's a wide spectrum technology that applies to loads and loads of use cases. Um, however, if you are looking for broadband quality of service, etc., consider the alternative technologies. Don't try to massage LoRa into an area where it won't fit. But I think we all realize that. Now, there's a range of issues you need to address when you hook up things today in the industry. I mean, you need to go all the way from sensor all the way up to the applications and lots and lots of things in between from your SCADA system, from your uh, data acquisition engine, from your RTUs and your PLCs, etc. Hook them all up individually. And, uh, and uh, normally this doesn't scale very well. We can take an example where you look at the connected industry where you normally have one mode of connectivity, one data acquisition engine, one data treatment engine per machine or per set of machines. So there is lots to be saved if you can aggregate data in one place and then consolidate much of the functionality in one place. Now, by 
getting all the data together from a multitude of sensors out in the field into one place, be that in the cloud or in your realm or in your data center, you can into that control point squeeze a lot of the functionality so it's all done in one place. And all of these variables from the SCADA system in this illustration all the way down to your sensors is basically uniform. You do the same thing for all your sensors out there. Then on top of that, you do your data management, your analytics and your visualization, which is unique per category of machine or per data set, yeah? So you try to group as much functionality together as you possibly can, thus saving money. Another thing you should consider, and uh, I'm now illustrating the, the architecture concept with, uh, with our gateway here, is the deployment architecture. Each network, be that LoRa or something else, contains N devices, be that sensors or actuators, yeah? Some sort of transport, your radio access network in this case, uh, uh, LoRa gateway, your core network where data lands, that would be your network server in the LoRa architecture, and beyond that, the internet with your visualization and analytics platform where you actually do stuff with the data. Now, each of these logical components needs to be implemented in a physical realization. Yeah, so normally you have the, uh, as we have been talking about the TTN guys here, normally you have the network server in the cloud residing in the data center. But it's perfectly possible for you to put that logical piece, say, in the gateway instead, terminate all the signaling in the gateway. Edge compute, quicker response time, uh, less resilience on the backhaul, and less cost for the backhaul. Now, I'm not saying that one model is better than the other, but what you need is the flexibility. You need the ability to put each of these logical nodes, end device, radio access network, core network, and data management, into any of the physical, in, in consideration, um, the physical entities you have one level below, the end device, the sensor, the gateway, the data center. Yeah? So you need, in many cases, the ability to run, say, again, the network server, either in the cloud or the gateway, or even better, dynamically shift between the two, depending on your ability to shift data back to the cloud, your backhaul cost, your availability of backhaul, the need for quick response times, etc. So that dynamics is key. Now, we have a platform called Lens. There are other mechanisms for doing that, but that is exactly what this platform achieves. Controllability over the distributed system where you put your core network or your network server in the gateway instead of in the cloud. Yeah? So we talked about the ability to aggregate much functionality into one point. We talked about the ability to change the dynamics of the network architecture, either statically or dynamically. Now, let's look at some use cases in the oil and gas arena. So we have a multitude of cases here, all LoRa-based, from leak detection to environmental monitoring. And, and here it is, it is key to mention that LoRa has been chosen as the technology due to all the, all the, all the premises it does fulfill. Um, good propagation, cheap, per message sent, um, ownership of the network, ability to play with the architecture and decide the architecture to your liking, etc., etc. Um, what we should also bear in mind that many of these use cases are not necessarily safety critical because, as I said before, LoRa plays in unlicensed spectrum. Thus, you cannot define with, uh, with great predictability what quality of service you're going to get. So if you need an emergency response system with a guaranteed response of X milliseconds, perhaps you should consider a licensed technology. Yeah? Again, going back to each technology for its right purpose. But let's go through a few cases that we have. So Chevron have deployed some 3,000 tank monitor devices out in, uh, in, in the US in, um, in, a, in a set of oil fields. They had a SCADA system set up with loads and loads of data points. They needed more. They needed more both to complement existing fixed or radio systems and, uh, and also to, to, um, to augment that with new data points, with new ability to measure things out in the field. LoRa was chosen, again, due to the reasons I mentioned. Um, they chose, in this case, the Multitech Outdoor Gateway. They had a multitude of sensors from, uh, from a range of vendors. Uh, these sensors, in this case, measure uh, the level of fluid in various tanks with um, quite some success. And interestingly enough, they also choose a distributed architecture where the network server runs on the gateway instead of in the cloud to get 
um, less dependency on the backhaul and also to reduce the backhaul costs. And they then used the Lens um, platform mechanism to actually manage that distributed system. We have another case with SNEF in France, who looked at refinery monitoring. In this case, leak detection using uh, two, two temperature probes on the inside and outside of pipes. And by clever analytics of these two data points, they could detect leaks. Now, they also used a multitude of sensors. And interesting here is that the sensor sits in a, a hazardous environment, so they need ATEX and C1D to certify devices, which in turn come from a multitude of vendors. And we actually have, interestingly enough, a number of our communication devices now undergoing ATEX and C1D to certification for hazardous environment deployment. So, as we said before, a private LoRaWAN network was set up. Um, I don't remember exactly which architecture these guys used. I, I believe they might have had a central go-to point, I, an on-premise installation of the network server, if I'm rightly informed. But again, the choice of architecture, central or distributed, depends to a large extent on the use case, what backhaul requirements you have, etc., etc. So SNEF is a good case. We have Obgenius the uh, operator in France, working together with Bouygues, they did uh, gas tank monitoring, similar in scope to the Chevron case. Um, again, a multitude of sensors. The uh, physical uh, implementation was slightly different here. In the Chevron case, we were talking about um, um, other kinds of liquids and other kinds of gases to be measured, but the idea is the same measure the fillness level of a tank, warn when it goes above or below a certain level, both to protect the tank during, uh, during uh, abnormally high temperatures, but also to ensure that they are always full to the right level. Um, now, their system goes all the way back to the, to the end device, in this case an application that sits on the phone, but the, uh, the idea is the same. Why deployment of LoRa uh, using, in this case, our gateways? using a multitude of sensors across the geography and uh, accumulation of data within the realm of, of, of genius in their private network. We have another SNEF case who monitored uh, the uh, environment in different nuclear installations. So, so here we had uh, water flow, water temperature, um, um, uh, acidity and, uh, and, uh, and temperature and flow and a few other items. Now, um, again, the network was built using LoRa due to the, the premises of LoRa. You get the right coverage and you get the right penetration, etc., at the right cost. Uh, again, a set of industrialized sensors from a range of, of different suppliers and data being piped back to the home base for analytics. Now, again, I need to go back on this, but if I'm not entirely mistaken, these guys might have chosen a distributed network architecture for this, but... Uh, I would like to leave that answer. Now, it's, it's worth noting that whether, again, whether you choose one architecture or the other is highly dependent on, um, on, uh, on, your, on your use case requirements. Uh, not only the cost, but also on, uh, on, um, on data privacy. Can you afford to send the data off to a third party? Now, some data has to be kept in-house, and specifically for the... Uh, nuclear case, I believe it was a regulatory requirement to keep all the data in-house. That said, there can be regulatory requirements on you choosing one architecture over the other. Um, the case that we've had for a while is uh, uh, electricity uh, pylon monitoring. Basically, a classical utility case, you put an a, uh, accelerometer on, uh, on, the, uh, on the pole, on the pylon, and Clever analytics detects abnormal movements, separates out the normal swinging back and forth you get in a storm from a pole starting to lean suspiciously or even falling down. Um, especially useful when you have deployments in, in far off areas where you cannot afford to send the monitoring engineers around. The complexity of the system is relatively low, but it was interesting to see the payback time on this and other cases. Here we talk about a payback time of, of a relatively short time. I think it was in the matter of months after it was deployed. Um, we show this case with some great success, by the way, at a recent utility week, and that gained uh, quite a lot of interesting media attention for, in my mind, such a complexity-wise simple use case. But that shows very much that what counts at the end of the day is 
the business case and the value of the case. It's not necessarily the techno technological complexity behind the case. And finally, just to round off, a case that we've seen many times before, uh, and this, we should say, probably falls more in the smart city camp than in the utility and energy. Parking, managing vehicles. So we have a multitude of providers of uh, parking sensors. Here we're showing the American company P&I, who use uh, Multitex LoRa module inside. But the idea is the same. For a relatively low cost, you embed a sensor uh, in various locations, in roads, in parking spaces. Clever monitoring of uh, the signaling you get back allow you to do a few things. You can distribute traffic and you can charge accordingly, depending on where people are parked. And this is a use case we see deployed in loads of cities. Um, I, unfortunately, have this in my neighboring town, close to where I live. So, you, obviously, you can't park anywhere anymore, but hey home, that's what you get. Um, now, um, the problem with some of these cases, like when you talk about a... Um, larger geography deployment like smart parking. Of course, the network will be bigger, you say. Yes, it will. And as always, the choice is buy network service from a third party, build it yourself, or as we heard this morning, use an intelligent data management service that allow you to share your data with a friendly network partner out there. Um, there are various deployment models to get the network up and running. And, and again, once you have decided how the topology of the network will look, then comes the architecture. Is it centralized or is it distributed or, or a mix between the two? So, these were a few cases. And the noteworthy takeaway is that um, the technology, the LoRa technology is there. It's mature and it's, it's, it's well deployed. What we're seeing coming now is sensors and actuators fit for purpose. They might be certified for certain, certain uh, environments like, uh, like a hazardous environment, ATEX and C1D2 certification. They might be certified using other mechanisms for use in a certain country's nuclear industry, etc. And that certification, that is purely a product issue. But that is what is the make or break for deployment into a certain vertical. Yeah? And the good thing is we are seeing more and more specialized pieces of equipment coming out now. The network side is easy because we own that. We make the gateways. We can ensure that they are certified. The good thing is now that we are seeing lots and lots of sensors, a healthy ecosystem building up with specialized sensors actuators across these verticals that previously were a little bit hard to address due to its pretty heavy regulatory requirements. That's it. If anybody would like more info about these use cases, there's plenty more info that I'm more than happy to share.